channel Travel Spin. My name is Ariel and today we're going to be checking out Tweetsie Railroad here in North Carolina. This started as just a roadside attraction as a way to bring trains back into the Blue Ridge Mountain area near Boone. What started as just a small idea turned into a roadside attraction and then it turned into North Carolina's first theme park. Now this theme park is not huge and it's meant for families with young children but I thought it would be fun to just check it out and show you guys what they have to offer. They also have a railroad, which is the biggest highlight. That's why it's called Tweetsie Railroad. I'm going to be going over the history of the park with you guys as well. It's pretty interesting history. So because there's a lot of people here with their families, I'm not going to be able to show you everything. Obviously, there's a lot of kids here, and I don't like getting kids on camera when I can help it. But I think you guys will get a good idea of what this park has to offer, and then you can see if it's a right fit for you and your family. The hope for my travel channel is that you can see what I'm doing and then maybe Maybe you can decide off my video if it's a place that you think it's worth going and checking out. Also, I'm just here to have some fun and I don't have a lot of people to go with me places. That's the whole point of my channel as well. I thought that since I'm already going to these places anyway, I might as well film a vlog series so that way you guys could come with me and maybe have a little fun watching what I do. I haven't vlogged for a long time, so give me a minute, please. Um, your patience would be much appreciated. This camera was not working yesterday and it kind of freaked me out, but it seems to be working today. So fingers crossed it works all day. So I've been having a lot of equipment malfunctions and it's just been a heck of a week, but um, I'm just excited to get this going. If you're wondering where I've been and why all of a sudden I'm back to doing channel vlogging, um, I'll have another video explaining what happened. But long story short, I moved. The pandemic screwed everything up. I tried to do it several times. It did not work. Where I lived definitely didn't work for a vlogging channel series. I've moved to a better location that I can get to more interesting places to bring you guys along. I don't know if you can hear it but I hear the train and I am so excited. Before we get into Tweetsie Railroad, if you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I will be making these videos more frequently now that I'm in a location that allows me to do so. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you guys wanna see more content like this. All right, that is our cue. Let's go check out Tweetsie Railroad. Tweetsie Railroad began as a destination park that opened in 1957, but the full story of Tweetsie goes back to the late 1800s. In 1866, Tennessee legislature allowed the East Tennessee and Western Northern Carolina Railway Company to build a new rail line that would connect Johnson City, Tennessee to the iron mines in Canary, North Carolina. Over the next 16 years, 50 miles of track was built through the rugged Blue Ridge Mountains, and in 1880, the narrow gauge railroad started operations. Eventually, tracks were added to include Boone, North Carolina to the rail line, and in 1919, service began. The train brought some much needed service to the small mountain communities. The train had passenger services along with bringing lumber out of the mountains. The train began running on a regular basis, and the familiar echoing tweet tweet of the steam engine's whistle became a welcome sound to locals who affectionately called the trains Tweetsies. While the the whistle for these train engines had a cute nickname. The nickname for the railroad companies were not as kind. The rail line company's initials were ET and WNC, and to the struggling mining and mountain towns, the big bosses who owned these locomotives were not a fan favorite. This is why during the Great Depression, the nickname became Eat Taters and Wear No Clothes. The old inventions began to make way for modern technologies, and the economy shifted toward personal automobile, trucking, and interstate highways. Majority of trains began to become obsolete and in August of 1940 the rail line ended its service to Boone. In 1950 ET and WNC ceased all narrow gauge operations. All but one of the original 13 locomotives were scrapped. Number 12 survived to carry on the Tweetsie name. The train was sold to be used on the Shenandoah Central Railroad in Virginia in 1953. A year later Hurricane Hazel wiped out the tracks. Next Next, Gene Audrey, the actor known as the Singing Cowboy, purchased the train and hopes to ship it to California to be used for his movies. However, it turned out that it cost too much money to get the train to California. Around this time, Governor Robbins Jr., who was a native of Blowing Rock, North Carolina, wanted to bring number 12 back to the Blue Ridge Mountains. He bought Tweetsie from Gene Audrey for only $1. The train was brought back to Blowing Rock and restored. The Tweetsie Railroad opened in the summer of 1957, 
just a few miles from the old railroad station in Boone. The train was used on a one mile loop that took people to and from a picnic area. Soon after, the loop was enlarged to three miles. A western town was built around the station, making this a popular roadside attraction. The Tweetsie Railroad kept expanding to quickly become North Carolina's first theme park. Over the years, the Wild West theme park has made other additions. They added a new train, Engine 190, that they got from Alaska's White Pass and Yukon Railway, amusement rides, live shows, the Deer Park Zoo, and a gem mine. There is also special events like the Ghost Train and Tweetsie's Christmas. The Tweetsie Railway is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places and they're open seasonally for families to enjoy. Just outside of Tweetsie Railroad is High Gravity Adventures. This is a separate ticketed attraction, but as you can see, they've got a ton of rope courses for you to go on. If you come to Tweetsie Railroad, you are gonna have a little bit of a walk, just to let you know, especially if you have a wheelchair or something like that. It is a flat gravel lot for parking, and then you turn this direction, and you can go up quite a hill to get to the entrance. So keep that in mind if you come to this place. This hill is quite steep. If you have maybe a bad leg or something like that, you might want to consider getting here early so you can park in the upper lot. This upper lot, there's not that many parking spots, but it is a lot flatter and it is easier to get around. And they do have some handicapped spots available up here as well. Tweetsie Railroad is nestled up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So while you're here, make sure you take in the beautiful scenery. I find these mountains pretty enough to just to come up here for an excuse just to walk around in these gorgeous mountains. You can buy tickets when you come at the ticket booth right in front or you can print them out like I did or you can get them on mobile and then you already have them on your phone. So I just heard a worker saying that there are two lines here so the one on this might change but the day I'm here the door on the right, uh, right behind me, says that it's for um, when you're purchasing tickets, and then the door on the left is for mobile, printed, or season passes. Because they also have a season pass option, which I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So during the summer and probably all the time when this park is open, be ready for school groups. When I got to the front doors, um, there was a lot of school field trips or like summer camp field trips more like and school functions and non like around around here they have a lot of um, like summer camp type things. So there's a lot of summer camp kids here this year. So just keep that in mind if you come here, bring your patient pants a little bit. But I got through and because I already had a printed ticket um, they actually let me skip the line and this uh, gentleman scanned me in with his phone and I was able to enter the park pretty quickly after I realized what was going on. So um, when you enter though, make sure you pick up a map and it's pretty big, but this is the map of Tweetsie Railroad. So it'll help you plan your day a little bit better and it'll give you an idea of what kind of carnival rides they have here. So I'm going to show you guys the map real quick. All right, so this is the Tweetsie Railroad map. We just came in right here at the entryway, and when you enter Main Street, they're gonna have a lot of things to do here. I'm over here near the restrooms and over on this extra area over here. They do have stroller rentals, which is really helpful if you need a stroller, and they also offer wheelchairs for $10 a day. We are gonna just walk around and see what's going on. The carnival rides are kind of over here. And you can see they're like a smaller version of Autopia in Disneyland, a very carnival-esque version. Looks like they have like a roundup, a small free fall, it's not very big. A tornado ride, merry-go-round, and some other carnival rides. It looks like they have a small Ferris wheel as well. Back here, they also have a playground, 
and a chairlift ride, which I will be going on. Hopefully I can film on that, I haven't asked yet. But they also have a lot to offer here. There are shows here at Tweetsie Railroad, so on the back of the map you can find show times and what to do for lost guests. You can also find the kind of food that they sell here in Tweetsie Railroad as well. But if you're looking for shows, these are some of the shows that they offer all throughout the park. Now remember, this is for kids mostly, so a lot of these shows are kiddie shows. But the Can Can Dancers actually sounds pretty fun, so I might try to hit up that show later on if I make it. The other fun thing about this place is a lot of these um, buildings where they have like the restrooms, the restaurants and things like that, they have these nice rocking chairs to sit in. So when I came in, I was a little overwhelmed, so I came over here and sat down in the shade, just took a breather. So now we're just gonna walk around and see what we can see, and hopefully we'll be able to, hopefully I'll be able to show you pretty much everything that you can do here. Brought to Quincy Railroad in 1960 to serve alongside the locomotive number 12, the original Quincy engine. 1918 to 1940, number 12 ran on the east end. And at this time, it is now safe to exit out the rear of the train car. Station wagon number 12 will now exit out the rear of the train car. It's a pretty long loop, actually. It says the train departs every 30 to 35 minutes, beginning at 10.30 a.m. The last train departs at 5 o'clock, so don't miss it. And these are the park hours today. Look at this, they even have horses for you to mount. Two sizes, that's cool. They even have the jail. Oh cool, they have briar horses and animals. I don't know if anyone's like a collector out there or remembers playing with these, but these are a hot item for collectors, especially for the horse collection. I used to have a few of these growing up. They're pretty cool. They're very expensive though. That's why I only had a few of them. <laughs> Wouldn't be an old western town without an old western general store or a western mercantile. is crazy crowded when the train is doing its switch with people but after the crowd subsides it's a pretty nice entrance it's actually really not that crowded when I first came in here it was packed with people trying to wait to get on the train and now it's nice and empty and there's not that many people around so as you can see this whole place is layered on levels um, the lower part is the parking lot the middle part is the entrance and then this is where the train is, and then up here is more. The, uh, the rides are over on that side. You might be able to see the Skyway bucket going, if I can get my finger out of there so we'll focus. The Skyway bucket looks like that is the, I keep calling it the Skyway bucket because that's what they were called in Disneyland, but um, it's like a ski lift. The ski lift ride is over there, and they have food and more stuff to check out. <laughs> They also have some local artists making really cool woodwork. They can make your signs or these fun windmills for your yard. That is pretty cool. All right, so there are some rides over here. Looks like at one point this used to be a blacksmith shop. Doesn't look like it's open today though. I know a lot of stuff probably also isn't open because of pandemic. We're in pre-pandemic world now and a lot of stuff is still shut down and not open yet, but this is still pretty fun. The Tweetsie's Palace reminds me a lot like the Golden Horseshoe style of place. It's supposed to be like a two-story saloon, so let's go inside and have a look. Kaylee, you're not looking at me. Oh, cool. 
Looks like they show old westerns in here. Oh, that's awesome. They have different shows here. They have the Diamond Lilies Can Can Review. And they also have a magic show, which looks like fun. Tweetsie, this is the kind of food you're going to be looking at getting. Ooh, they actually have a lot of stuff. They have chicken chips and burgers, hot dogs, barbecue. You can get a whole pizza if you want to. They have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the picky ones. They even have nachos, salads, sides, drinks. Oh, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Well, it's okay, we get to keep them. I know you can hear it out. I love the sound of the train through the mountains. It sounds so pretty. So that means the train's back. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. I do wanna go on the train before the night is up. The last train leaves at five o'clock. We have, me and my family have to be out of here before then. So I'm gonna hurry up, eat, and then I'm gonna go to the miners camp, up the chairlift, check that out, and then I'm gonna go and make sure I hit the train because I want to go on the train really bad. I love train rides. I'm a, yes, I'm a, one of those. I, I love the train at Disneyland, and I think trains are really cool. That's the whole reason I wanted to come here and learn about the trains. So this is really awesome. Uh, Food-wise, uh, you guys saw the menu. They have a lot of options. Um, it's just your basic American food. I got chicken strips and french fries. Um, I thought I was filming, and I found out I wasn't, so I took a bite. So the chicken strips are fine, and the, um, you know, they're just crinkle fries. They're nothing special, but they get the job done, and they had a lot of nice dressings to choose from. They had honey mustard ranch, barbecue, ketchup, a bunch of other uh, condiments along the wall, and it's a pretty neat setup in here, I gotta say. Oh, and I got sweet tea, because I'm in North Carolina, so when you're in the South, you have to drink sweet tea. All right, so I'm gonna eat all this really fast, then we're gonna go check out the rides that are available down here, and then we're gonna take the chairlift to the miners' camp. I'm well fed. It was really good. The chicken strips and french fries, they were actually pretty good. I would recommend eating up here at the Feed and Seed. They had a lot of choices, especially for picky eaters, little ones, and things like that. So next we're going to go check out the county fair, and then we're going to take the chairlift up to the mining town. 
Welcome to the county fair. Oh, how cool. The Autopia or whatever they call it here goes right over the top of this bridge. That is so cool. Rides here at Tweetsie are included in the price, so you don't have to worry about buying yeah, extra tickets or anything. There are a few items that do cost extra. There's gold mining, gem mining that take place up in the mining camp, and then there is a petting zoo that I'm going to be doing. You only have to pay a little fee for some feed if you want to feed the animals. But yeah, I love this place because everything is included in the price. And if you have little ones, this place is definitely a bang for your buck. Now, I just found something that I wish Disneyland had, personally. This is really cool. Look at this. This is a tower that gives you the height requirements for all of the rides that they have here. So I'm going to show it to you guys. There's the inches on the side. So if your little ones match up, these are the rides they can go on. See the train if you look behind me. All right, here's a better overview of the county fair. The rides, like the Ferris wheel and things, are down here. And this is the tornado with that super spinny ride. The chairlift was actually not too bad at all. It wasn't that high, so that was actually pretty nice. Oh, look, here comes the little mini train. guys so much is going on around me that I can't really like talk much whenever I start something a new project that is new it's not this isn't exactly new but I haven't done it in a long time I never think of things to say on the fly I'm not a very good improv person I always think of other things to say later about what I see but that was really cool so the chairlift wasn't too high at all it's not like a ski resort where it's massive and you think oh yeah I'm definitely not gonna live through this if it falls it was actually fine so um, if you're afraid of heights, maybe you could take the, the bus. There is a bus that'll take you up here, or there's a walking path, but it's really steep, so be warned of that. So we're gonna check out this mining camp, and right off the bat, I see something actually pretty cool. They have coffins here, and I don't have anyone to take my picture in it, but I'm gonna try. Obviously that show is for really little kids. I just want to show you like the beginning because I was just standing there when it started, which was perfect timing. Um, I moved so that way parents could see their kids doing stuff. It's very interactive, which is great for little kids. Um, when I was actually um, a young child, I really liked the idea of child participation because I always wanted to do musical theater and theater arts. 
Um, so seeing kids be able to get up on stage and be like, wow, I did that, that's actually really cool for them. And it's super important because sometimes kids get confidence that way and it can just be the little things, you know, that make a big difference later on in life. So up here in Miner's Camp, you can pan for gold and pan for gems. They have the gem mine right here, and this is an extra cost, just so everyone knows. For one gallon bucket is $12, and a two gallon bucket is 18. And then you get to pan that bucket and see if you find any gold. So I decided to do it, because why not? I'm here, and I might as well, and I love this kind of stuff. So I got a $12 bucket, and um, I got my mining pan, and we're gonna see if I find anything interesting at all. This is gonna be really hard to film, but I'm gonna do my best. So I take it the first thing you do is you take your bucket. So for the $12 one, the bucket's actually not too bad of a size, but we'll see if there's anything in here worth keeping. Oh, it looks like I already see something. All right, so I've got my sand, and this is gonna be really hard for me to film, so I'm gonna have to do this all one-handed. You're supposed to use the rivets of the mining pan to hold it back the gems and then you're just supposed to like wash away the sand. It's kind of harder to do with gems versus you know actual gold because gold dust, little gold nuggets, they're easier to find, they're easier to get stuck on the rivets. Wow, I actually got a ton of stuff. I'm really surprised. I think this is, I don't even know what this is, but glass I think. You don't have to mine this way, I'm just doing it for fun. There is a much quicker way if you really want to. You could just get all that wet at once and, and keep the big pieces. But I'm here to learn and explore. There's also a chart on the wall that I'm going to show you in a minute that shows you what kind of pans they have. See, that's how you do it if it was gold. You'd wash everything out and then you would look on these, on these rivets of the pan to see if there's any gold sparkling. I'm not in, oh, I think I just saw, I think I saw a gold flake. Was that just me? Oh my God, you guys, look at that. I found a flake of gold. Eureka! Okay, so there might actually be gold in here. Maybe you shouldn't do what I did and like dump it all on this. If you want to do it in slow motion, you can pan all of this away. But I only have a couple more hours here and I have to kind of speed up the process. So when you do this, they do give you a baggie so you can put all your findings in here. So I'm gonna do it real quick and then we're gonna get out of here. Could just take this and put it sideways and do this and sift probably some gold flakes out of there and keep what you find. If you do the bucket, which you don't have to, you could just come over here and play in the sand and water. And these are some of the things that will be inside your bucket. Now you're not guaranteed to get all of these obviously, but you can get a nice amount of, thing, of really pretty crystals to take home. So this is my haul and it's actually pretty good if I do say so myself. It's totally worth $12 if you just wanna do the smaller bucket. That's a lot and they're really pretty. At the very end of the miners camp is the deer park. Now this is a petting zoo and I'm gonna buy some feed. Feed is 50 cents if you wanna feed an animal and it looks like they serve it to you in an ice cream cone, which is pretty cool. All right, I've got my little 50 cents feed inside an ice cream cone and we are going to go feed some animals. Oh, you're so cute. Is this happening right now? Oh my goodness. Hi, you want some fish? Oh my gosh. I don't have enough for all of you. Take some out of your hand. Oh my god, hi. Oh, okay. Well, you go ahead and have that cone. Hi, buddy. Nope. Chalk me up is a bad job. They know I don't have any more food. I just want to touch it. I touched its chin. <laughs> and it got stuff all over me. Hello. Very photogenic. Hi. You're so pretty. 
I'm sure there was a sign. I probably missed it because I'm spending too much time talking about the deer. I don't know what kind of deer these are. We had white-tailed deer in my old hometown where I grew up. Hello. Oh my gosh, I feel like Snow White. The animals here eat the cones really, really fast. So, um, might want to get two or three, maybe. They're only 50 cents, so that's not too bad. I kind of feel bad. The deer in the entrance just ate my cone right away, and then the ones down here are like, what gives, where's mine? So you might want to think about getting more than one cone if you do come here. People who love petting zoos or if you're just you know you're one that loves goats I would definitely come here just to come up to the mining camp to go to the deer park so you can pet deer and you can also see the goats and pet goats and they have baby goats right now so that's super cute so much fun at the deer park but it is now 1 15 and I want to get back to try to get on the train so we're gonna head back down from miners camp we're gonna get back into the entrance way and then we're gonna wait for the train and we're gonna take a ride on the Tweetsie Express Pulling our train today is locomotive number 190, the Yukon Queen, built in 1943 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia for the U.S. Army. She served in Alaska during World War II and was brought to Tweetsie Railroad in 1960 to serve alongside locomotive number 12, the original...
Tweetsie and her crew kept you safe and sound. And to be sure you stay that way, please stay in your seats until the train is coming to a complete stop. Then exit out the rear of the train cars. Check and make sure you got all your valuables, especially the little ones. The cowboys who rode with you today can give you directions to wherever you want to go. much fun here at Tweetsie Railroad and you can right now hear the Tweetsie train pulling out of the station. I'm just an adult and I had a blast. I was able to see a can-can show, I was able to get food, um, I got great views of the Blue Ridge Mountains on that sky, on that sky bucket, that uh, chairlift. I always keep wanting to call it a sky bucket, but I had a lot of fun. So I know this place is like for kids, but I still enjoyed myself. I was able to do the train ride, we got robbed twice and the sheriff was able to save the day in the end and that's all that really matters. This place is cool. If you're an adult and you're thinking that you wouldn't have a good time here, I enjoyed myself. So if you're one of those people that just likes to see what's going on around town or in like local attractions like this, think about coming here. Let's see, I got here at 10.30, open to 10 today. I got here at 10.30 and I was able to stay. It's almost, it's 10 to three right now. So I did pretty good. I, I didn't even do everything. I missed the magic show um, and I didn't do any of the rides. So if you have a little kid, this place is definitely where you want to take them. They had a full day. I had fun petting the goats. I panned for gold. I found some gems. This place is awesome and they have season passes. And uh, at the end of this, I'm going to put a little price sheet up just so you guys can see how much everything costs at Tweetsie. So thank you guys so much for coming with me. It was a great day for me just to play with my camera. Remember all my tricks and things that I used to do with my camera before I stopped doing vlogging. This was a great child run for me to make sure I still liked it, and I do. I really like it, and I'm definitely going to be back very soon to check out more attractions in the North Carolina, South Carolina area. Maybe we'll go up to Virginia next time too, very soon in the, in the near future. And I moved out here to have some fun work and be able to go on adventures with you guys and bring you guys with me and help you guys plan a vacation. So if you're ever out here at Tweetsie Railroad, make sure that you bring your kids and just have a really fun day. I had a blast. Thank you again so much for joining me on Travel Spin. I hope you guys have an awesome evening, day, whatever you are watching this vlog. And thank you guys so much for coming with me. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me taking you guys on these little adventures, checking new things out in the area, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And thank you again for coming with me to Tweetsie Railroad. Bye everybody.